So today I want to talk about thyroid physiology. It's not the coolest, most exciting topic, but it's something that excites me and I want to share it with y'all. So without further ado, let's talk about the thyroid physiology and the HPA thyroid axis. The hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis is regulated by what we refer to as a negative feedback loop. It's kind of like a thermostat. Say if the heat goes up here and then it shuts off, but if the heat falls, it kicks back on. So it keeps it nice and in a homeostatic fashion. So in healthy patients, the hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone, which then stimulates a thyroid stimulating hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. From there, the thyroid responds to the TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone and therefore will release the production of T4 and T3 respectively. So roughly 99%, 98, 99% of circulating thyroid hormones are tightly bound to proteins. And these proteins include transthyretin, albumin, and thyroid binding globulin. Roughly about 1% of the thyroid hormones are circulating free hormones. And these free hormones can actively bind to thyroid hormone receptors in the nucleus of cells. And these cells, we refer to them as target cells because these cells are, well, to easily put it, they're the target of these thyroid hormones. The TSH to free hormone negative feedback loop occurs in what we refer to as a log linear relationship and, and occurs in a negative feedback relationship. So in other words, as the TSH goes up, the free T3 and the free T4 will go down. But if the TSH starts creeping up and then you provide the patient with exogenous thyroid hormone replacement, it'll start pushing the TSH down. So even small minor fluctuations in free thyroid hormones can have a very sensitive impact on the TSH communication and small abnormalities in TSH levels could possibly even indicate hypothyroidism months and even years before an overt hypothyroidism is actually clinically diagnosed. That's why many patients will often complain of symptoms of hypothyroidism uh, months and years before their labs actually reflect that they are clinically overt on the laboratory diagnostics. So on average, what I'm seeing with a lot of patients is that they're complaining of these symptoms of hypothyroidism 12, 16, 18 months before their labs actually indicate that they're clinically overtly hypothyroid. Thanks for watching. If y'all have any questions or any considerations for other thyroid topics, uh, give me a shout or reach out to Steve Devos. I'd be more than happy to maybe make a video on it and answer and or address your questions. Thanks. Have a good night.